Hey everyone, if you've been told you have fatty liver disease, I've got some great news for you. It's completely reversible. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the exact steps you need to take to reverse fatty liver quickly, and you might even start seeing changes in just a few weeks. We'll talk about the foods you should eat, the ones you should avoid, and some extra tips to boost your liver health. I'll also share some supplements that could help speed up your recovery. My goal is to give you clear, practical advice based on the latest science to help you get your liver back to normal. Let's dive in. To reverse fatty liver, we first need to understand what causes it. It's pretty straightforward fatty liver happens mostly because of eating too much sugar, especially fructose and sucrose. Sucrose is just regular table sugar, which breaks down into fructose and glucose in your body. When you consume a lot of fructose or sugar, it triggers a chain reaction in your body that doesn't just lead to fatty liver. It can also increase your risk for serious conditions like diabetes, heart disease, dementia, and even some cancers. So why is fructose such a big deal? Unlike other foods, fructose doesn't trigger a hormone called leptin, Leptin is what tells your brain you're full after eating, so you stop feeling hungry. When you eat fructose, your brain doesn't get that I'm full signal, which makes it super easy to overeat. To make matters worse, eating a lot of fructose over time can lead to something called leptin resistance. This means your brain stops responding to leptin properly, so you feel hungry all the time, even when you eat other foods, not just sugary ones, there's solid research backing this up. A study found that just one week of eating a high fructose diet can increase fat buildup in your liver and make your liver less sensitive to insulin, which is a key hormone for managing blood sugar. But the good news is by making some simple changes, you can turn this around. Let's start with where fructose comes from and how to avoid it. Fructose is a type of simple sugar naturally found in things like honey, fruits, and some root vegetables. Humans have been eating these foods for thousands of years without any major problems. The issue comes when we eat large amounts of processed fructose and sugar, which our bodies aren't designed to handle. Fruits and vegetables do contain fructose, but they're not the main culprits. Your intestines can handle about four to five grams of fructose at a time, which is roughly what you get from eating vegetables. Fruits have a bit more fructose, but they also come with fiber, which slows down how quickly your body absorbs the sugar. Plus, many fruits are packed with vitamin C, which helps counteract some of the negative effects of fructose. So eating whole fruits and vegetables is generally fine and won't harm your liver. The real problem is sugary drinks. We all know sodas and soft drinks are loaded with sugar, but even drinks marketed as healthy, like fruit juices, can be sneaky sources of fructose. Orange juice, apple juice, cranberry juice, tomato juice, you name it. These often have just as much sugar as soda, sometimes even more. Next time you pick up a bottle of juice, check the label and look at the grams of sugar per serving. Don't be fooled by claims like natural sugars or no added sugars. Even if it's natural, the sugar in juices is highly concentrated and you're not getting the fiber you'd get from eating the whole fruit. This makes it way too easy to overload your system with sugar. Other drinks to watch out for are sports drinks and energy drinks. These are often packed with sugar and can do serious damage to your liver if you drink them regularly. The American Heart Association suggests keeping your daily sugar intake below 24 to 36 grams, but if you have fatty liver, I'd recommend cutting out all sugary drinks completely. That's the first big step to reversing the condition. Along with sugary drinks, you'll also want to avoid dried fruits like dates, raisins, or prunes. Yes, they're natural, but the sugars in dried fruits are super concentrated because the water has been removed. Without the bulk of the original fruit, it's easy to eat way more sugar than your body can handle, which puts extra strain on your liver. Now, let's talk about what you should eat to help your liver heal. One of the best things you can do is eat more protein, especially at your first meal of the day. 
whether that's breakfast or something else. A study involving over 9,000 people found that eating enough protein, particularly early in the day, has a big impact on what you eat later. People who ate a high protein breakfast ended up eating less overall and were less likely to reach for sugary or processed foods. On the flip side, those who had a low protein breakfast were more likely to crave energy, dense processed foods that can make fatty liver worse. So how much protein should you aim for? Try to get 25 to 35 grams of protein per meal if you're eating three meals a day. Good sources of protein include eggs, lean meats, fish, dairy, or plant-based options like beans, lentils, or tofu. Starting your day with a protein-packed meal can help curb cravings for sugary or processed foods, which is a huge win for your liver. Plus, eating more protein can help you lose weight, and weight loss is one of the most effective ways to improve fatty liver. Research shows that losing just 5% of your body weight can reduce fat in your liver, and losing 7% can completely reverse a more severe form of fatty liver called non-alcoholic statohepatitis, or NASH. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds, losing 10 to 14 pounds could make a massive difference for your liver health. Protein helps with this because it keeps you full longer, making it easier to eat less overall. While you're increasing your protein intake, you need to be mindful of the types of fats you're eating. Protein, rich foods like meat and dairy are great, but some of them like red meat, processed meats, butter, and ice cream are high in saturated fats. These fats can be a problem if you eat too much of them. A study found that overeating saturated fats increases liver fat much more than overeating fructose does. Another study compared two groups of people. One group ate muffins high in saturated fats, Oz, from palm oil, and the other ate muffins high in polyunsaturated fats from sunflower oil. After seven weeks, the saturated fat group had a significant increase in liver fat, while the polyunsaturated fat group gained more lean muscle mass without harming their liver. So what does this mean for you? It's okay to eat some saturated fats but keep them in moderation. Aim for no more than about 5% of your daily calories from saturated fats. To put that in perspective, if you're eating 2,000 calories a day, that's about 11 grams of saturated fat, which you might get from a small serving of red meat or a pad of butter. Instead of loading up on processed meats, fried foods, or creamy desserts, focus on healthier fats like the polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats found in fish nuts, avocados, and olive oil. If you're cooking, use olive oil instead of coconut or palm oil, which are higher in saturated fats. This is especially important if you're following a very low carb or ketogenic diet where a lot of your calories come from fat. Keto can be a great way to lose weight and improve your liver health, but it only works if most of your fats come from healthy sources like fish, nuts, or avocados not from saturated fats. The good news is you don't have to go full keto to reverse fatty liver. Cutting carbs can help, but it's more about the type of carbs you eat than cutting them out completely. Focus on eating carbs with a low glycemic index, which means they don't cause big spikes in your blood sugar. Low glycemic carbs include legumes like beans and lentils, dairy, vegetables, and fruits. These are digested more slowly, so they're gentler on your liver. On the other hand, high glycemic carbs like white bread, white rice, most breakfast cereals, and processed potatoes, think french fries or potato chips, can spike your blood sugar and make fatty liver worse. A study showed that cutting sugar intake to less than 3% of daily calories for just eight weeks led to significant improvements in liver fat in adolescent boys. That's proof that small changes can have a big impact. Besides diet, there are a few other things you can do to help your liver recover. First, cut out alcohol completely. Alcohol puts extra stress on your liver and avoiding it is critical for healing. Second, aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise each week, like brisk walking, cycling, or swimming. That's about 20, 25 minutes a day. Also include strength training or muscle building exercises at least two days a week. Exercise helps burn fat, improves insulin sensitivity, and supports your liver's recovery. 
if you follow these steps, cutting out sugary drinks and dried fruits, eating more protein, choosing healthy fats, and picking low glycemic carbs, you'll likely see improvements in your liver health in just a few weeks. Studies show that these changes can lower liver fat and improve blood markers quickly. The sooner you start, the better, because fatty liver can progress to more serious conditions like NASH, fibrosis, or even cirrhosis, which is when your liver becomes scarred and may require a transplant. By acting now, you can stop that progression and fully reverse your fatty liver. Now, let's talk about supplements. You don't need supplements to fix your fatty liver if you're eating the right foods. Real, whole foods are your best medicine, but some supplements might help speed things up. First, vitamin E at 800 international units per day has been shown to improve NAS in some studies. However, high doses of vitamin E, so above 400 units daily, have been linked to increased risks like higher mortality or prostate cancer in some cases. So talk to your doctor before starting it. This supplement is usually recommended for people with more advanced fatty liver disease. Second, Omega-3 fatty acids, especially from fish oil like DHA, can help reduce liver fat and improve liver markers like ALT and AST. A 2018 study found that omega-3 supplements led to noticeable improvements in liver health. You can get omega-3s from eating fatty fish like salmon or mackerel, but supplements can be a good option if you don't eat fish regularly. Lastly, choline is getting attention as a potential helper for fatty liver. A study found that people with higher choline intake had an 81% lower risk of liver fat buildup. Choline is found in foods like egg yolks, lean meats, dairy, seafood, yogurt, sunflower seeds, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, or cabbage. While supplements are available, we don't yet have enough research to say exactly how much choline you'd need or if supplements work for everyone. For now, focus on getting choline from food and if you're vegetarian or vegan, lean on those plant-based sources. There are other supplements out there that people use for fatty liver, but we'll save that for another video since it's a big topic. The key takeaway is that supplements can support your efforts, but they're not a substitute for eating well and making lifestyle changes. To wrap it up, reversing fatty liver is totally doable, and you can start seeing results fast if you take action. Here's a quick recap. Avoid sugary drinks and dried fruits. Eat more protein, especially at your first meal. Choose healthy fats like those from fish, nuts, and olive oil, and stick to low glycemic carbs from whole foods like vegetables, fruits, and legumes. Add in regular exercise, skip alcohol, and consider supplements like vitamin E or omega-3s if your doctor approves. By doing these things, you're giving your liver the best chance to heal and stay healthy for the long haul. I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you in the next video.